Hi, I'm Saren. And I'm Ray. We're your spider baby hosts from To Know Her Is To Fear Her, a Spider Woman podcast, as well as proud members of the collective. You're listening to Capes and Lunatics. Gimme, gimme. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I'm Kelly Thompson, and you're listening to Capes and Lunatics. I just like watching the heads. It's like night. Hey, it's, like, it's like hey, old. It's like night in the rock. Night at the Roxbury in here. Anyway, welcome back to another week of the Capes and Lunatics. Stop trying to make it a thing, Philip. The I, no will, I will will it into existence. Anyway, I am Phil. Join me as always. It is that mustache man from New Jersey. No, it's not Sam Kirk. It is Charlie the Professor Esser. And that sunshine girl from the Sunshine State. Hear that sarcasm? It is. Hey y'all, it's a little hellfire. And we can't forget about Philly's podcast paper. <laughs> hey man, we can you can will stuff into existence. Ray willed that Moon Knight show into existence. Who the hell do you think you are, Franklin Richards? I was, <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of podcasts, do you know what is going to cease production? No, what? After twenty two years, iPods. Oh, well, yeah, because everyone uses their phone Wait, now. Yeah, I know, but that means that there will no longer be people will no longer understand. Why podcasts are called podcasts, Ooh. and it's it, it's it's going to be weird because now first you got to explain what a broadcast is, and then you got to explain what an iPod was, it was a and fo- then to explain exactly why it's called a podcast. It was just weird. It was a phone with no cellular service. See, <laughs> no texting. See, tablet. Well, actually, it was can right. I get an F in the chat for Zoom? F in the chat for Zoom. Best thing Microsoft ever did, and it went nowhere. Yeah. Well, second best thing. Let's let's all let's all acknowledge that Xbox is greater than PlayStation. Oh, that's sure, that's right? at Lil Hellfire. At Lil Hellfire. Real gamers know. Real gamers know. <laughs> that's why it's so hard to find. The only thing Sony has going for it is those damn Spider Man games at this point. So. Well, that's why you got to secure the rights to your. Secure the bag. IP, you know. That's, well, a, that's, the, thing. It's, that's the thing. Sony doesn't even want Spider Spider Man movies. They just want the rights for them damn games. <laughs> just talk about being petty. I know. <laughs> like low key, the games are better than the movies. I'm just I'm just saying the storyline is way better than the movies. <laughs> oh my god! Well, I think they have more freedom in the in the video games to tell a story. You know, say, get the game developers to write a movie. <laughs> well. Mm, Evil Dead's like, well, we tried that and you didn't like it. I'm like, you got like seven movies. Calm down. (laughs) (laughs) All right. But not. Oh. Yes. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah. Lead the way, Phil. All right. Well, we're going to talk some TV. But uh, yes, our main topic. uh, Yes, Star Trek Strange New Worlds is two episodes in. And uh, I think we we can all agree with that. Up on it, I have not heard a single bad word. No, the show and I'm just like, the internet, that's, that's suspicious. The internet, that's the whitest show, the whitest show I've seen in a while that's been uh Star Trek related. That's suspicious. It's good, but I'm just saying it's suspicious. I mean, you can yeah. see a thread going Wait. through it, but I think people like you know, like the more formulaic, almost like a one and done. Yeah, yeah, like it's like yeah. original Star Trek. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That that's yeah. kind of the point. They're taking Strange it back to a more simple world. time in our Star Trek universe, which I'm here for, honestly. Which, again, yeah. you know... Although, it's... I'm sure they are going to make it more archy as time goes on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, oh, yeah. They're going to start... Because here's the thing. You can't get archy until you establish what we're doing, you know? Well, and... I, thought, I thought they laid that down in episode one. Oh, I've seen my death ten years from now. <laughs> You know what? You know what? It's yeah. it's gonna be like a Twilight Zone thing. It's gonna be like, yes, he's gonna revert his death, but he's gonna end up in that chair. 
careful what you wish what? for. <laughs> well, he didn't. He saw himself in the chair. Yeah, no, but he keeps saying he sees his own death. Oh, well, maybe he's seen his own death too, and that was like you know at some point later, mm. or or you know maybe that maybe that's why he has to go. But maybe that's why he eventually convinces Spock to take him back to uh, was it Talos one, <laughs> whatever it was, you know. You know, because, like, no, man, I don't want to die. They, they can, like, fix me because they can, like, just – they don't know where the parts go because for Whoa. some reason they never ask for, like, a diagram. Put it here! <laughs> I just want to say that it's genius casting for uh, Anson Mont because if you don't know, he was in a AMC Western Hell on, Hell on Wheels. So it's just kind of like, ah, oh, I see what you did there. I, I, do, <laughs> I see what you did there. And he's Black Bolt, right? From what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, bo- both for. Both, I don't care about that. Bo- I care about Hell on Wheels. No it was a hell of a show. Both versions. It was way better than The Walking hey. Dead. Sorry, Marnell. Sorry, Diane. That's bo- the best show AMC ever did, next to Better Call Saul. Yes, he was both <laughs> versions of Black Bolt. I mean, so yeah, I mean, we're in an Anson Mountaverse right now. Yeah, I mean, he's he got to redeem <laughs> Black Bolt somewhat. Yeah, I mean, I like his. I love his uh, Captain Pike. Somewhat. Yeah, well, he, he didn't have that much screen time, you know. He had to yeah. die. He had to die. <laughs> well, yeah, and I do think that it was important that they do close that chapter. And, and you know... I and mean, never I speak of it again. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, let's... I mean, if you really want to... I, I, I feel kind of bad for, for John Krasansky in that, because you know that uh, Patrick Stewart isn't coming back to be uh, Xavier again. And Black Bolt's definitely uh, nobody told Charlie. You didn't just see that news. What? What? Wait, did he, is he coming back? Yeah, he's coming back. What is yeah. Xavier? Uh, or did you get? We got he's this. He's coming back. That's all they said. So. Oh, I was gonna say, did you? Did you? Did you get? Is that true? Or did you got got? Uh, we got this covered. No, 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 no. It was oh. like Variety or something. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I haven't seen that. So, okay. Well, then I'll have to dig up the link. How funny is that? Uh, but I'm 80 years old. Well, you get to you get to sit in a chair the whole time. Okay, deal. Yeah. I'm in. You son of a bitch, I'm in. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that, I mean, that's a good. That's He's good. like, can Ian? Can Ian come? <laughs> They're like, eh, throw it in. So, oh, here's an interesting question about Strange New World. Just to get us back on topic. Okay. Boo, who, are, who are you and what have you done with Charlie Esther? <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> now, so it's, it's a little different. This is Charlie on Seltzer. Um, <laughs> this is your brain on Seltzer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, okay. So, I guess at the end of Discovery, there's this whole... Well, not the end of Discovery, but like at the midpoint of Discovery where people get thrown into the future. And oh, at the end of season two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's this whole space-time explosion, which is the premise of the first episode. It's like, oh, they saw warp signatures, and now they're going to try and recreate it, but use warp as a weapon. But it strikes me that... that always turns out good. At the end of Picard, you also get a, oh, look, it's a space-time explosion thing. So it's like, oh, are all three of these stories interconnected by that space-time... They gotta get Discovery's numbers up one way or another. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, in, in I mean, I don't know how much longer that show is running. Well, I was gonna say, did they but, confirm a new season? Because the way they ended it, I mean, I'll try not to be too spoilery, but they kind of ended it where it could have been, it could be a series finale too. So it's like, you know, I didn't check because I didn't want to make myself upset. <laughs> Why are you here for you Discovery know. now? I thought you were down on Discovery for a while. It, it, it's just the principle at this point. You, you know, I am like, you know, if you don't like it, I love it kind talk, of thing. Talk about, those people. talk about petty. <laughs> yes, petty. I mean, I, I have no problems with Discovery except for the first, like, two episodes that just, I, I, I'm sorry. Let Klingons be. Just, just. Yes, let's never just, speak of it. Okay, war. You know, okay, war. Let them be a thing, man. Just, just. I, you know, and I, I, I can even get the idea, oh, well, there's different groups of Klingons, but then just, like, state that. Don't just, like, have every time we see Klingons, have them look completely different. Yeah, what no are other they, alien race does that. Have, have, you you know? Know, have you noticed since then we haven't seen one Klingon on any show? <laughs> on any of these new shows? No. Well, the, be- the best Klingons are dead, okay? <laughs> well, well, Worf's coming back for Picard season three. Yeah. Oh, really? 
Good for they're, them. Get they're that get, back. They're getting the band get back. Get that back, Dorian. They're, hell, they're getting the band back together. It's going to be all the original cast. Oh, yeah. Although, can I just say, I kind of like uh, Rebecca Ramon, Ramon, however Remain. you say her name, yeah. as, no, as a number one. Yep. I, I especially like her without the Samos. That's a yeah, shallow hell, though. Rebecca <laughs> Romain O'Connell. <laughs> are they married? Is she still married to him? I, what? I thought they got divorced. No, I think she's still. Oh, I, I think they, she's still I with Jerry O'Connell. Married. I thought they were just shacking up. I don't know. I don't, they, I don't. I think they have kids again. I mean, I don't know if they're married or not. Uh, I thought they were, yeah, but you they, know, it's probably a more Hollywood. But they've thing, been, but know, they've been where, together for. Yeah, I think they're still together. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's doing the Kurt Russell Goldie Hawn thing <laughs> she, now. You yeah, know, you don't get married. I mean, look at just, them. They've lasted this long. So <laughs> I know. You, you have some beautiful kids, and you call it a day. You know. You don't need. You don't need paperwork. I mean, kind of you do. It's a contract, but. If you both well, got money, you don't need a contract. Exactly. You know, you just make sure what you want's in your name. You know, you keep your you keep money, your money separate, money. and it's 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 the it's the privilege of being rich. If you're rich, you don't have to like have everything in everyone else's name. You don't have to pull your money. That's you're if rich. you're if you're both rich, yeah, it's like oh hey, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's just part, go our separate ways. Well, yeah, you know, well, you the want Jack to Nicholson method. <laughs> I'll buy you a house down the street. Don't bother me. Hell. <laughs> See, you can do that, too. Um, you know. It's... That's how I live my life. <laughs> uh, live close by to visit often, as they say. Um, yeah, so, uh, but no, but I do think that that is one of these, I think that's sort of a through line that they're trying to build into this. And it does, I feel, especially with the, you know, spoilers for Picard, the return of the Traveler. Oh, um, the, in the finale, yes. Shut up, Wesley. Yeah. But you know what's weird about that is like just before they did this, like Wes, like uh, not Wet Wes, Will Wheaton actually like did a whole thing about yeah, yeah. I was thinking this, it would be really great if Wesley Crusher showed up in Picard, and like I wrote a little fanfic about it, and then like, and it's weird because when everyone was complaining about him not being in the Return of the Original cast, and it's just like you know he was he was coming back. Just relax, kids. But then he just basically goes out and says it, and no one even thinks about it at the time. That, hey, wait, is he telling us that he actually is in Picard? Because that would make sense, you know. I it just seemed to. I well, mean, you know, Will has a has a need for attention, so a lot of people <gasps> do just t- 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 tune him out. To be fair, yeah, he's going to be in town and all. He's going to don't, gonna, don't d- you know what I'm talking about? Don't don't yeah. don't leave me out here on a limb. He's he's going to be here in August. Maybe I'll try to get a try to talk to him at a con. <laughs> at the con. <laughs> But um, I do get the feeling that with this time travel concept, this time travel ethos that they've already established, we're gonna get a crossover. The work they've done with um, with time travel throughout the Trek franchises, and um, within the idea of you know how time can get off course and then get back on course, you know, su- such as you know, I-, I think that all this stuff is gonna come back, and who knows, maybe they're gonna tie it back into the temporal cold war from. Uh, Enterprise, which I don't even remember how that ended, but um, <laughs> you know, it is it is interesting to me that they did do this time between the three shows in this way to set up Strange New Worlds and to set up some of their interesting adventures and what I like best about these first two episodes is they immediately show both the problems with the Prime Directive and the purpose for the Prime Directive. It's not a Star Trek show if you don't break the prime directive. <laughs> well, no, but the whole point of the second episode is, you know, the shepherds are like, you know, don't mess with our comet. We know what we're doing. I don't care what you guys think you're doing. Trust us. We we built this dang thing. We know what we're going to be doing. Leave it alone, you strange little, you know, monkeys that just built a rocket ship, you know. <laughs> That's not your job. You, you know, you're like the buzzing of flies to Vigo. And, um, you know, that's the thing is that there are going to be more advanced alien races that you're going to have to deal with. And you can't just get up all on your, you know, John Wayne horse and say, well, they don't care about the pilgrims down there. We're going to have to show them what's for. I don't you know. That, that's interesting. You, you, can't, you came up with that, you know, the superior alien race, which they, they were. But I mean, I kind of got the analogy. It's just like. Oh, hey, you, you, you know, this is our religion. You know, sit back. Look, God will handle it. Don't worry. You don't do anything. God will handle it. Well, no, to quote Bender, when God does something, it's like he never even did anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But in the end, I, I actually do think that that was what was, you know, that the system worked the way it was supposed to. So Yes. Because they said don't blow up the – and what they basically said was do not blow up the comet. It has a purpose. There's a thing it's going to do. And, like, turning the comet, that was something they could do. <laughs> don't blow it up. Just turn it a little. Fine. Chip a, chip a piece Letter off of it. the law, not spirit of the law. That, that's how I love yeah. to roll. <laughs> chip a piece but off that's, it. But that's the idea. That's the idea of the prime directive here. That, you know, Cowboy diplomacy. The actions that you're going to take, even though you think it's what's best for them, it might not be. You know, that basically... I love how they're like, decoding the music, and she's like, wait a minute, what? Where the hell did this come from? <laughs> well, I mean, it makes sense, if you think about it. All cultures communicate with sound waves. So, I yep. mean, if you think about it, like, if you were a race that that involves syrinx, you know, instead of larynx, and you could just make, and you could make all these melodic differentiations, it makes your ability to communicate a lot more complex. And so it stands to reason that there probably would be lots of races of beings out there that would communicate via, you know, some sort of uh, musical note. Yes, yeah, suck it, binary! <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, burn. You know, we can't all just be grunting apes. Some of us, you know, have to sing. Yeah, some be people. more uh, elegant. Yeah, I know. And, you know, and it was a, it was a great, it was a lot of great stuff for Uber in this. Oh, I I, lo- I I think that that's another strong thing is that just the cast of this because when you're recasting or I love existing- that the cast is old as dirt <laughs> makes me feel better. What? <laughs> no offense, guys. <laughs> well, the you 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 mean Rebecca and uh, and and uh, Anson, right? Yeah. I don't think any of the. I, I, I like that they're not like the fanta- baby Fantastic Four or anything like that. That yeah. I don't know. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I mean, like yeah. a more seasoned. I like a more seasoned cast. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, they're well, yeah. they're steering into it. I mean, you know, Pi. You know, he has the gray hair. You know, he's not supposed to be twenty two. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, Chris Pine. Ooh, <laughs> Although, you know, I like Chris Pine and other things, just not my Star Trek. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, we all got to find our our, our our footing in in our character. He is Hollywood's yeah. best Chris, though. So. <laughs> oh really? Are you sure? <laughs> Chris Evans. Second Hemsworth. Every day, every day. Whoa! I thought Chris Evans was your favorite. But Chris Evans is second. I mean, if you know, you know. Okay. <laughs> she 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 likes guys named Chris who play guys named Steve. <laughs> See, now you get it. Now you get it. There yep. You go. But no, I, I I love the casting. Uhura, Spock. I mean, even I I love Anson Mount's Pike. I was kind yeah. of surprised by the Spock, but I was just like, okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was it's a good Spock, and I think they do play with... I like them playing with Spock as a more emotional being, as a younger Spock, a more devil-may-care Spock, you know? So he's like that grandson of Gregory Peck or whatever, so I was like, oh, okay. Oh, really? Nepotism, baby, I had nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, I... Awesome. Co- I don't know what Gregory... What the last thing Gregory Peck was in, so... Um, yeah, that's your claim to fame, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, well, no, well, I, mean, I think it's just, you know, family business kind of stuff. It's yeah. not so much that he... He got the job because he's Gregory Peck's grandson. It's just like, oh, yeah, you know. It's like Opie, you know, uh, what's his name? Ron Howard. It wasn't that, you know, his parents were actors, and that was just the business he went into, you know? It wasn't really. He got to put his brother in every movie he ever did. No, well, that's nepotism. But, you know, that's. that's And then then his daughter. That's different. That's different. No, that's truly nepotism. Uh, And then his daughter. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, what what is his brother's name? Um, Clint. Nobody knows. He is Ron Clint, Howard's yeah, Clint brother. Howard. No, Clint Howard. <laughs> I, how dare you? He, he, has his, <laughs> he has his own career. He's the smog strangler, Lil Hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> he was Ice Cream Man, you know? He's, he, he's had his... He's, he's he's had his run. He, he can get his own work when he needs to. And Landers is an old bitty. <laughs> That's what he said, man. I know. I'm just gonna. <laughs> what I miss now? I don't know. No, Clint Howard was in an episode, early episode of Seinfeld. He, put, you know, when uh, Jerry and George go out to uh, L.A. to clear Kramer's name. They, yeah. yeah, Clint Howard is. They meet him in a police car, but yeah, he turns out he was the smog strangler. But they're like, how? They're asking him, how much do you tip a chambermaid? He's like, 
And he tells them, he's like, no, no. Today, at least. Yeah, and they're like, well, that's what Ian Landers said. He's like, oh, Ian Landers is an old bitty. <laughs> Uh, I Clint Tower. Well, you know, like I said, I, I, it, it's it's an acting family. You know, not everyone's going to be Ron Howard. You know, it's and Ron I'm Howard just, really. I, let's face it, Ron Howard isn't even famous as an actor, really. He yeah, had a couple a of no, notable. You know, yeah, he had a couple of notable acting roles, but his real famous. He's a child a actor. actor. Yeah, it's like half. Yeah, and, and like all good child actors, he became a great director. Yeah. It's like happy days. That, that's the Correct. path. You don't want to if, keep acting. Yeah, <laughs> if possible, stop it. acting. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, because I mean, you could be old as dirt and direct. You know. Yeah, look at Clint Eastwood. Oh, what? what? That's out <laughs> little fire. No, he is an old man. Oh yeah, he's yeah. like a thousand. He, he even made a whole movie about. It. I think he's made like two movies about being old. Yeah, he I know. He, he's seen yeah, hours. He's, 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 he's seen hours. Like he was talking to an empty chair. To, to be fair, he's been making films about being an old man since Space Cowboys. So. Since I was born, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was like in the 90s. So he's been old since the 90s. So. I've been old for 84 years. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Hey, it's good when you can be old and continue to be old for years, you know? Yeah, but I mean, I mean the Ron Howard thing, you know, it's still like a tradition to put like your, like, you know, siblings into stuff. Look at James Gunn. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. But we'll like Elf show that. up. We need oh, to know. I know. We'll elf show. Oh, well, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. You saw that they're going to counter Earth in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, and no. We just saw Mount Wondergore. Where, where did Elf? Oh, God. Where did Elf cross over with the rest of the Marvel Universe? The Evolutionary War. Mm. I'm telling you, that's the plot of Guardians 3 is the Evolutionary War. Going to get I- some. Is that going to be the teaser for freaking uh, Thor Love and Thunder? Maybe, man. We're gonna get <laughs> That's the end credit scene of <gasps> Elf. <laughs> oh, my God. Charlie Esser. We could, we could get Elf meeting Howard the Duck. That would be... Don't tease me like that. <laughs> that would be glorious. Um, but you know what would be even better? If the Kool-Aid Man showed up. Because he is a Marvel character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, he was a licensed character. Yeah, licensed character. Yeah, so they'd have to get the. It's like Rom, so, you know. You can't just have Rom show up. So, you so, know? so Ray can say, "Oh, that's who that is." <laughs> oh. No, but you know, that I think actually, they had co- Koala co- Cola or something. Down there. <laughs> it would be interesting if they do have Elf and Howard the Duck, and then you get what, what's his name, Wyndham. Oh, Wyndham. Herbert Wyndham, the High Evolutionary. Herbert Wyndham, yeah. Then just Herbert Wyndham, just rise above them and like. You are not, you are evolutionary that, dead ends. That fancy man in his purple armor. I know. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, know. he's purple, you know he's evil. Hail. Ah, well, pff, words, <laughs> li- words Lil flows by. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so. But yeah, those strange I'm new- really digging this one, though. I didn't think I was going to like it, but. Oh, I've been, wait, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this since Discovery Season 2. I'm like, yes, I need more of this. And I- I'm not going to lie. I'm only here. Because I saw that Paul Weasley is going to be Kirk for season two. So I'm just jumping in on the bandwagon. I'm just going to be real with y'all. <laughs> but it's actually turned out to be a good show so far. And plus they have Adrian Holmes, a.k.a. the new Uncle Phil, uh, as uh, Robert April. So I'm just like, okay, yeah, the casting is, is there. So I'll show up. I'll show up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes from it. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I, I think that here's the thing. I actually think that. The Pike stories are the stories they should have wanted been telling. to tell. Yeah. yeah, you know, they we should have been doing this for a while. I mean, I enjoyed Enterprise, but I think I would have enjoyed Enterprise a lot better if it wasn't Enterprise. It was the yeah, story Bacula. Of Pike. <gasps> you know? I will let you. We can all look. Listen, listen. We can gang up on Bacula. It's okay. Everybody in the franchise hates Bacula. It's okay to poop on Bacula. Really? I, I don't hate Bacula. You know, I, I hate I actually, that ending. I'll tell you that. Oh, well, well, endings are endings, you know. Hell. Like, that was rude as hell. Like, when I got yeah. to the... I was like, are you effing serious? A holodeck? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it, it was a better... It was a, I was like, did he answer this question already? Where did he know the answer to this question? It was a next generation... It was a, it was a next generation episode. <laughs> Basically. It was the only episode. Like, we already have the answers to this. We already know. Season 8 of Next Gen only had one episode. It was the finale of Enterprise. 
eh, what are you going to do? Um, you know, but yeah, you know, but here's what I'll tell you: last episodes of hard, are hard. Hey, the last episode of Naomi. Oh. The whole season. Let's be real. The whole season. It, yeah. it it felt like they. Oh, this was a different. It was like they were trying to remake Dawson's Creek because Dawson Creek is a slow burner. But they're like, hey, let's snap Naomi in here because she only has six episodes from her comic to go off of. So it became a very generic early 2000s teen, you know, rom com dramedy. And again, some of this stuff we were Without doing. The drama. She made me- everybody loves each other. Everybody gets along. Let's go camping. Yeah. And some no. of the and some of the stuff they did in these last couple episodes, we should have been doing this way sooner, like the beginning of the season. Yeah. And, and, no and, shippable characters like that. That is the de- if you're a CW show, you have to have at least three love triangles off the bat. You got to get your shipping wars. It, yeah. it, it's just it, it's teen TV that that is the formula, and they and missed the mark. The biggest problem for me was always just that they set up all these mysteries and then resolve none of them. <laughs> resolve none of them. It, it's like oh, Batman and Superman. She's not a detective. <laughs> it's just weird that you would just make all this stuff about the Batman and Superman characters, but then also pretend like they're fictional. But then also, no, actually opened with, yeah, there was one day when Superman came to town. Yeah. And honestly, there is nothing that is emblem- emblematic emblematic of Naomi so much as the final Brutus reveal. And he's just a big fat guy <laughs> with a beard. I know. And, that was a troll. With... <laughs> and it just, it just doesn't even, I think it was doesn't budget. even like, strike you like... It's like, it's like, oh, I'm actually super powerful. And I'll, I'll, I'll gesture at you. And you go, oh, wow, you're gesturing so powerfully. But I, here, I'll gesture at you. It's like, oh, wow. I know. So I, I was like, is this Brutus or the guy who does his taxes? <laughs> it was just, it was, it was just sad. And I know. Then, and then it's like, now I have returned life to the planet. Oh, Cool. Which is like okay, that's that's a neat trope. Um, and uh, and th- this was this was very weird. If this was only going to be, you know, if this was going to lead to a season two, because at the end, you know, she gets back through the portal, closes it, and they're just like, oh, we I guess we never have to worry about Brutus again. It's like really, you know, it's like kind of seemed like, seemed like, like they were li- li- leaving their guard down, and I'm just like, really? I'm telling you, this was never an Naomi show. This was some other show from like yeah. way back and deep in the catalog that they just slapped and, their name on. And did they have like a low budget? Lil- like did they have a low budget for this, Lil? Because like at the end when she like... Apparently. When, when she flies into the sky at the end, that looked horrible. That was worse than the freaking Smallville season 10 ending. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the thing is, is... Yeah, it just... It, basically, all they... Need, all they needed was some monsters of the week. That's what this. Sh- what's that? That's what that show needed. Yeah. So I said they should. Monsters of the but week. But they should have followed the Smallville yeah. formula, not the Dawson Creek's formula. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's and that is what I think. Strange I'm going to give it five years. Right. I'm going to write a pilot, and it's going to be done. I'm going to do it right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the only you thing know. the only thing they renewed was Flash and Superman and Lois, and they they said they because they're too busy creating. New shows that aren't going to matter because the CW is not going to be oh, a network yeah. in two years. But but the, yeah. but but they're saying nice. Are you effing kidding me? I get yeah. Let's have another show with not with Batman enough, not in it. Enough. Let's have another show without Batman in it about Batman. Enough. I that was, I thought that was coming to. Uh, I thought that was coming to uh, HBO. Is that? Not well, they're HBO. doing stuff on HBO Max like the Penguin series. They were going to do a GCP. Yeah, the Gunnerverse. They're they're doing the Gunnerverse. So, yeah. But the, yeah, no, there's like a Gotham Lake show. Not the yeah, no, <sighs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, but but again, Batman. You know, they're, they're it's all getting it. confusing. There's, it's just know. too many, too many balls in the air. Too many, too many fish. Hail. It's just, Hail. you know. But again, again, they need to shut down everything on this on the CW. Anything they want to keep, put it on HBO Max. Well, they don't want to shut down everything on the CW because the CW is still a going concern. Yeah, but they're selling it, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they are. No, it's not. It's not if it's who they're selling it to. They're still well, looking for the buyers. So you can't just you can't just not do anything because then who wants to buy a house? Make it one of those uh, TV stations that just rerun Judge Judy and stuff like that. Who cares? That's what they do in the AM anyway. Well, who cares? Okay. But oh, well, that's two different things. Well, well do, do the do, CW, which is a which is a 
I know not it's just the eight to ten block. I get it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, but it's like you know all of those. No, but like literally, their their, their demographics are so terrible. They're getting point twos on like the Flash is like has like a point four in the demo. Just you do better with reruns of like movies or something. And that like used that. to be the biggest the Arrowverse show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like they're almost losing money at this point. Oh, they it, so so yeah. So they said Superman and Lois and the Flash, and then everything else they canceled except they didn't announce the uh star anything about Star Girl. Are they going to wait for that new season of Star Girl and then you know when that's done be like, oh yeah, by the way, that's canceled too. So people actually no, tune I, in. I maybe? think they probably are going to like give it a proper ending, and then they're like, oh yeah, it's the last season. Unfortunately, I think that this is a, it's a weird time because they have they now they have nothing. If they cancel Star Girl, they don't have Naomi. They have nothing to compete with Miss yeah. Marvel with. So I don't know if they're actually going to cancel Star Girl. She does pretty good in the ratings. So that's what I think. Yeah, because that's usually well, in the middle yeah. of the summer though, too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A summer show. It There's not does a lot of com- for a summer show. Not a lot of competition. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end, it's really what Discovery wants to do because at this point, it's it's discover it's Discovery has it. That it's Warner Brothers good. Discovery, first of all. Warner yeah, Bros. Well, Discovery. But yeah, it's like it's AOL Time Warner, you know? I, it's... And I, I know they wanted to be their own thing, but Naomi, look at Stargirl. That's what you should have been doing, you know? I mean... Yeah, it should. Well, I mean, the comic book character didn't allow for that, first of all. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Six issues, I know. No, but you said, and we can't have the Justice League. Yeah, but yeah, we can't cross over with the Flash. We can't cross yeah. over with it. We can't cross over with Legends. Yeah, we can't. You know they, what I mean? But they established. So, so they brought themselves is, into a corner. Yeah, I think I think they intentionally wrote themselves into a corner because there was a I lot. I thought of that things. they would learn the lesson from Black Lightning, but I guess they didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they probably should have thought more through where they were going with all this. Because it seems like they... They thought I, because they were on the CW, it was a guarantee. They're like, yeah, well, it's in the Arrowverse, it's a guarantee. Well, well that's like that... Uh, I, they finally got rid of that's Batwoman. It's not in the Arrowverse, that's the problem. Well, it's like, if you don't put it in the Arrowverse... It yeah. technically, it's the Berlantiverse, is what I mean by that. So, she is in the Berlantiverse. Uh, then they should have had crossovers. You know? <laughs> maybe they were waiting, you know, to, maybe they're waiting it, to see if it survived, I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is, is that it kind of reminds me of, like, when Inhumans came out. And Boo. you know, at the time, you know, they were saying like the agents of Shield said, "Yeah, we're happy to cross over." And then you know, Buck said, "No, we're not crossing over with them. We're part of the main MCU. We're not dealing with Agents of Shield." It's like, well, you know, you crossed over with nobody, and you got left off into your own. You're on Earth eight three eight now, man. Well, That's- I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that I, I know what I think they've been saying. Crossovers. Are- Overs have been harder since COVID and stuff. You know, they've been trying to keep everyone like yeah. on their shows and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, all you have to do is somehow sure. mention the other stuff. Well, you know? I know. And, and again, with this, it's like, you know, all you have to do is discuss Central City or Gotham City or Metropolis. It's like... And everyone yeah, goes, build oh. the world out. That world felt bland, dead, and boring. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really felt outside of everything. And it was just... It was strange. It was very strange how... And not, and not in a strange new world's way, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, oh, hey, you're an alien? Okay, cool. I guess something's going to happen one day. Hey, let's party. You know, a lot of those episodes, it just seemed like it was... Told you, Dawson's Creek. I'm pretty sure Jill used to write on Dawson's Creek or something like that, because... Man, that was painful. Those first three... Those first five episodes, like... I usually give a show of three episodes at most... I know, like Ugh, episode five. I gave that show five episodes, and I'm like, nah. Like nah. episode five and six, I'm like, man, we're still spinning our wheels. Yeah, I have a 13 episode show. Yeah, that, yeah. Listen, listen. I watch British TV. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> you gotta make it. You gotta make it last for at least three years. Hey, oh. Ten episodes or less, and you gotta make it last for three years because that's when the next time the season's gonna come out. <laughs> <Good Lord. sighs> so, yes, Naomi is done. <sighs> Uh, that well, that's what they said. The, the, Batwoman's done. Batwoman's uh, done. Legends is gone. Oh, I might get, I might get to be Batwoman too. But yeah, no, like I saw something. Was it the ri- a writer or a showrunner on uh, Legends of Tomorrow? They're like, yeah, we we wrote a cliffhanger ending, you know, expecting you know something, you know, maybe would spur them I don't on. Know why they were expecting it. it was season seven in the CW? I know. In flux. <laughs> And so they, that, that's their fault. I know they're that's like their fault, they're honestly. like they're like we were at a cliffhanger and they didn't blink. So I'm telling you, Lil, season nine of Flash next season is just gonna be Barry running around fixing, well, yeah, fixing, it, picking up everyone's the Flash, picking up everyone. So they can definitely give yeah. Katie Lutz her ending. Nobody else really matters at that point. Yeah, it, was only, it was Katie. She's the only one left, right? 
I think, yeah. Everybody I, else came after, like, season no. two or whatever, hey, well. so. But yeah, no, season nine of The Flash is going to be him. One episode, he's going to free the legends, you know. And then, you know, then he's going to run off and finally find Oliver Queen's son who's been missing for, like, the last two years. <laughs> Some say he's still bleeding out in those streets. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put Laurel back on her own damn Earth then? But yeah, while but, we're at it, yeah, but her Earth two is gone. Crisis killed, destroyed that. Sure it is. <sighs> Nothing's ever really gone. Hey, old. I just Anywho, want the let's end of it talk to be uh, Donald Faison and Jack and uh, Zach Braff in a Blue Beetle costume, just hanging out. No, doing so. doing surgery, bro. Doing surgery. Like, no. like oh, I was, I was gonna say those Xfinity. Was that Xfinity commercials or what? Is, whatever internet yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just you know Zach Braff and Donald Faison as Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. I think that works. And that's like that's what you ended off on. It's like you know what? We should be superheroes. Yeah. If they can do it, we can do it. I don't know. Now, I don't know if Zach Braff has like found like a new calling as like you know like the you know the the, the nice dad on stuff because like a couple weeks ago uh, Danielle was watching like the new they, they did like a new cheaper by the dozen and he was like the mm. dad yeah yeah well that's good the, I mean, a hey, movie good work. I think no, so it's a series on Disney oh, Plus a it's... series okay. Oh, okay yeah yeah it's on Disney Plus yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it's a blended family little you know. Yeah, not, oh yeah, no, it, I it, saw it. I didn't know if it was a movie or a TV show. So. Yeah, I saw the thing. His people poor wife about. have twelve kids, so unlike the actual story that almost I'm, killed the poor wife. Well, you <laughs> know, plot to you drop. That was a thing. Still is a thing some places. So, yes, well, <laughs> don't tell the Supreme Court. Oh my. I, honestly, America was founded on it. But anywho, let's talk new comics. Yes, new comics, new old comics. comics. We didn't talk any comics last week. <laughs> Damn, Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually, been a strange month so far. Strange New Worlds, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, well, Suck let me it, say this, since we did not talk uh, comic books last week, we talked Radiant Black. I knew you were going to bring Shut that up. up. Yes. Yeah, Radiant Black. Um, I enjoyed this book. Yeah, I Bob. like the fact that we have... Um, that there is this dynamic between our two, <coughs> between the former Radiant Black and the new Radiant Black. And this idea that, you know, I get the feeling like they're both a little mad at each other because, you know, um, I believe Randall feels that his friend wants it back, but it's like it's his. And he, but he also feels like he doesn't deserve it and his friend would be better at it. Um you know, I, I like the dynamic that they work through. I like the uh, the bad guys that they're facing. Um, I like Radiant Black just really beating the heck out of just everyone. I just felt that that was a, a, a nice take on it. Um, and just, know, just using those gravity powers, yeah. Yeah, breaking people's arms. He's, he's a little bit messed up there. And then, you know... Relatable. The, uh, I was going to say, that's little for wishes you could break some bones just by looking at people. Yeah. Uh, are you sure she can? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Working on it, friend. Working on it, friend. <laughs> Enough drinks in her. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Nathan. And then, of course, yeah. at the end, the radiant black creature is reaching out to Nathan. But then we also see that in the rubble, the fireman, somebody forgot their drone camera. So, oh. I wonder oh. what's going to be on that. Something incriminating, I'm sure. Um, but no, I continue to like Radiant Black as, as an indie book. I think it really shines, and I, uh, I, I'm happy to read it. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I think the Radiant Black entity is just like, yeah, I don't want to be with Randall anymore. Come take me back in. I don't, please. <laughs> Randy! <laughs> that's all I can yeah. think. Well, you know, and I, I, I think it's also just that worry that Randall's maybe getting a little too nuts with his power, you know, that mm-hmm. he's going a little mad with power, that he really... Yeah, you can't trust a guy named Randall. You just can't. Mm-hmm. Clarks. That's an argument. <laughs> Alright, love, what you got? At least in fiction. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I've never met a single Randall in real life. Met some Randys. Randy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy that I worked with is Randy. It was, he goes by Randy, but his name is Randall. So. Uh, had a Randolph, not a Randall. But yeah, my pick, of course, is Archie Meets Riverdale, number one, written by Daniel Kibblesmith with art by 
you uh, know, Archie Faves, Archie Champs, Pat and Ted Kennedy. Um, so yeah, basically it's just, you know, Archie, he's met himself a couple of times, but this time he meets the serious Riverdale counterpart and he is shooketh to his core. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a Mirror Universe episode. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> that's, well, that's good. It's like the first Archie book they put out in two years, so you know I had to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking you... Ray Ray! <laughs> I was thinking you were going to to uh, discuss that. I almost debated buying it myself. Um, I think you I, would enjoy it if your if your comic book shop has it the next time you're in. You should pick it up. It's it's very hilarious. Yes, go ahead. You know, go I didn't ahead. want to overburden myself with comic books because we had a lot of comic books from last week too. So, um, yeah, I think you would enjoy it. I probably would. I like most comic books, believe it or not. <laughs> hey, did you ever get around to watching Mystery Incorporated? No, but you know what was weird oh, is like the day after you mentioned it on the show, everybody started feed. talking about it. <laughs> no, it's been in my feed. It just oh, like, okay. showed up. <laughs> yeah, Mystery Incorporated. And it's a fifty-three minute episode, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a commitment. You know, I gotta no see. ads though, no ads. <laughs> well, well, my, I have ads. No, they turned it off. The, you know, creators have the option to turn ads off on. Oh, those. okay, okay. Well, you know, I, I should get around to watching it, but yes, I, I, I did see it. Thought it was weird that after you mentioned it, and like I know that now they're making a push for it, and it's been in the news. But it's like it's like, oh wow, there it is, right there. Oop, just, there it just is. Like, Google's oh. always hard at work, babe. Google's always hard at work. <laughs> what do you got, Philip? Ah, uh, all right. So, Lilith, which Spawn book do you want to talk about this week? Spawn three twenty nine. Okay, that's fine. I'll talk about the other one then. Okay. Ah, uh, so Lisa. Seems like stuff is happening in this book. Remember, I thought it was spinning wheels for a while, but I told you that it's the March to three fifty. <laughs> I know we still got twenty issues. So, so they, they 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 heard what we were saying, and they're like, you know what? We better get we, we better make them think that we're actually doing something. <laughs> I know. I mean, I guess maybe they're trying to flesh out more of these characters because you got uh, Redeemer, Forsaken, or whatever you want to call them. You know, honestly, I, I like the main book well enough, but I think I like all the other books better, especially oh, yeah. Gunslinger. Yeah, I think yeah. Gunslinger's the best mom book, personally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I mean, I'm here for all of them, but I'm, again, I, I think this one's picking up a little bit, so. Yeah. About time. About time. Yeah. It's been 10 issues. It's about time. It's time to J. If you want to get back into spawn, now's the time. <laughs> Right. Honestly, it's always a good time to jump into Spawn. Honestly, it's nothing too heavy that you really need to understand. Well, yeah, it goes through cycles, too, you know. <laughs> Went through the gym down here. Uh, <laughs> Ray asks, is Charlie Esser incarcerated? I see a blank wall and a bunk bed in the corner. <laughs> Hashtag free Charlie. <laughs> we need no, that on a t-shirt. Just, this is just how I live. Um, just deep down in the bunker, man. We're just, I'm, just, I'm just waiting. He's, a, he's in a small Waiting apartment, right? to reveal their master plan. Exactly. I feel you, Charlie. <laughs> F- funny, he, with heels, man. funny, he looks like he's in prison, but Lilith has the shiv. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise, Phil. <laughs> Whoa. But now, where do you think we're going with Spawn? Like, I mean, what can they really do that we haven't done? Well, that's Thought, what I'm we finally get a Spawn mobile? I don't know. 350 you- Spawn mobile? Uh, what so you so your merchandise goes up in value always thinking phil always thinking <laughs> i got oh lord again maybe the original it's, small mobile baby it's a march to 350 i mean what else could they do for the status quo he's been blow re- up the universe and start over I he's been know. replaced like, that's basically the only thing that's left is a crisis right well they teased it in uh what was that um which issue was it? Was it with the regular series or was it King's? Oh, well, maybe it was King Spawn. Are they going to bring? Wanda? Yeah, it was King Spawn. Are they going to bring Wanda about. back? Well, I think they're trying to wait to see how Punisher fares with that one. If, if you know, you know. <laughs> like, ah, oh, damn it, they beat us to it. Yeah, but they could bring back a full, you know, fully formed one to Blake Punisher. You just know he's sleeping with a corpse, you know, a zombie. Yeah, if they bring back Wanda, I don't know. It's like kind of like Uncle Ben's situation, really. <gasps> oh, they tried to piggyback on some of that popularity. Yes, we'll bring back our character of Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I see you, Todd McFarlane. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past his petty ass, honestly. Oh, no, she would get, like, uh, witch powers or something. The Crimson Sorceress. It's, it's like... <laughs> 
Oh, uh, because I mean, seriously, it's a supernatural book. It could easily happen. No, yeah, why, why not, man? Give her powers. Throw it in. Throw it in. Speak it to it. Speak it into existence, Bill. I think I just did. Uh, go ahead, throw it in. All right, what do you got, Charlie? Uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to uh, again a book from last week, uh, One Star Squadron number six, six of six. Um. It's a sweet story, man. I mean, you know, Red Tornado, he's dealing with, you know, uh, you know, Crime Buster, you know, died. And, you know, uh, Heroes for You is out of business. And, you know, he's just trying to be a good guy, trying to be a hero. And, you know, he's um, defreezing the wind turbines, uh, which actually saved, like, you know, it, it says, like, yeah, because, the ele- because I got him moving that allowed power to flow that saved this many lives more than I ever did as a superhero, you know? Um, and it's about, you know, it's about the little things and the little ways that you save your, uh, uh, save the world in your small ways. Um, you know, you've got, uh, Lex recruiting, uh, the heckler. He's just, he's a salesman for the, for the galley app. Um, it's just for renting henchmen and heroes. Because this is a whole business now, and um, oh my! You find out that Minuteman has sort of gotten himself clean. He tried to kill himself with an overdose of Miraclo pills, but uh, he got saved by his old dealer, and uh, who is now a helicopter pilot in classic Barney Gubble fashion. He got clean and took helicopter lessons, and you know that's that, it, it's just it is such a sweet story. Of the humanity of an android and his family, and making their way in the third tier superhero world, um, where if where you have three types of super, this is actually neat because uh, GI robots teaching a class on superheroism at the community college, and there are three. There's uh, uh, alien savior, uh, the oh yeah, alien saver, tech soldier, science survivor, and vigilante. Um, love the ad on the back, Charlie. Superman Lois. Uh, oh, oh yeah, Smallville. Okay, or Superman. <laughs> Superman and Lois. I don't know. It's Same funny. difference. I know, bud. I know. <laughs> but no, One Star Squadron. I love it. It's it. It was a good series. It ran its course, and uh, Smallville you know, the next generation. Like, Smallville the next generation. <laughs> Why not? You know, I. I it would I, be I, Chloe's son, technically. Come on, Phil. Get your head out of your butt. <laughs> Come on, get your head out of your butt. Because she had a kid with green arrow. Just oh, it would be okay. that story, actually. Well, well, well we're generation. well, we're not touching Chloe these days. So. Yeah. Yeah. Got a Lana. F in the chat. F in the chat, man. <laughs> Does that just taint the character too? Even if it was a different actress? No, like, no. I separate the art from the artist on that yeah, one. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, no. it could some someone. Although I think if Chloe people can still listen to R. Kelly music, I can still I can yeah. still root for Chloe on Smallville. Sorry. No, no, but I, I think Chloe is kind of like Gus Gorman. They're great characters, but yeah, she was like an original not, we're character. Ever see them, yeah, in in the DC main universe. Well, she yeah. was canon in New Fifty. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, they tried to the crowbar her in the uh, comics. Yeah, and that, you know, yeah, and then we she disappeared quickly because they knew, honestly. Yeah, well, because you know, there's other people that can fill a role. You know, I mean, I'm like Gus Gorman. Who would be a very unique and interesting character? Save it for the movie reviews, Esser! Oh, I can't wait for June. I cannot wait for June. Superman 3 versus Superman 4. I'm just going to sit back. Me and Chris are just going to sit back, eat our popcorn. Oh, that's okay. I'll let you two duke it out over the, the other ones. <laughs> Batman? Mm-hmm. Ah, that. Oh. Don't give it away, Phil. Uh, why? Don't we- give it away for free. Well, we no, give them, we tell them what we're battling. We just don't tell them the result. Yeah, yeah we haven't told them that we already destroyed her technically because Phil's a freaking dictator. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm a huge well, dictator. I haven't decided anything yet? It's yeah. no. I'm a huge dictator. I, I thought you were going to say no, no. Don't disparage people's favorite characters. Batman, my favorite character. Harry. <laughs> now he's going to click off. <laughs> Click it. All right, that does it. <laughs> All right, Lil, throw throw a book out. Go ahead, throw throw it in. What, what book you got? Oh, I will throw out uh this book, Miles Morales. What if number three? What if Miles Morales was the Hulk? Of course, it's green, so we see through him. <laughs> um, it's by our friend to the show, Anthony Piper, with art by uh, Edgar Salazar. 
Oh, why didn't you tell um, me it was by Anthony? I want to pick that up. I thought I told you. I, I was picking it up. I, I thought I told you why. <laughs> well, besides that, it's Miles, obviously. But it's basically um, Teen Hulk. It's like he didn't get bit by a spider. He got blasted by gamma radiation. And, you know, he's got these raging hormone, teen hormones, you oh. know. So he's <laughs> always angry. So he's just trying to live a normal life, but every now and then, don't make him angry. <laughs> it's, it's actually really funny. And, you know, you think this is a Hulk book and you're going to have a lot of like, punch him ups and action. It's actually only like, I think it's only like a six panel action page out of all of it. And the wow. whole issue builds up to it. And I thought that that was a really smart construction for the story that they were telling. So I, I enjoyed it. Like, I definitely think this these, these books are definitely a cash grab. But at least this one was entertaining. I like this one better than the Wolverine one, honestly. Oh, nice. I think this is the last one, too. I think this is three of three, so. Hmm. But yeah, this is the best one. So. Nice. Very good. All right. Poor Miles. This is what it's come to. Well, you know, Miles. through the Spider-Verse. Can't have your own real book anymore. This is what it's come to. You're a cash grab. Well, aren't we all? Toby Brown has taken your place, bud. I'm sorry. Again, it's just, you know, he's suffering from the X-Men problem, you know. Just, you know, they don't want to give Sony too much, uh. Helper. Too much to work with. Exactly. All right. Let me pander to our audience. Uh, all right. Moon, Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood came out. This Number one came out this week. Oh, you got that cover. Yes. Okay. I like that. Yes. I, I managed to get three of the four covers. I'm missing one. Jeez. They saw you coming. <laughs> I always get the variants, especially for Moon Knight now, because if you wait a week, it goes up to like 50 bucks. <laughs> it's true. I know. It's true. I know. I know. All right. So, yeah. What's... All right. So, so is that like Tulip f- Futures where you have to unload them right then, too? Like, it's going to go up in a week, and they have to unload it, because if you hold on to it past then, it's just going to go down once people realize that, oh, it's just another comic book. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, somebody was here for Moon Knight. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> but no. I, I liked it. I mean, this one actually makes, next to uh, Electra, this one is the one that makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah, I like this. Yeah, this and the Electra one was, uh, yeah, my favorites. I, I, I sampled some and of those. Carnage, eh, okay, whatever. Wol- Wolverine was all right, but it's like, yeah, yeah. No, let, let's be honest. It was okay, but this one was great. <laughs> Even the Deadpool, but, you know. That was a that's a cash grab. This feels like, it feels like necessary Moon Knight, honestly. These stories, they could fit in anywhere. Oh, yeah. Where that, that Wolverine was just like. Well, I think it's like, they, that's what they all, re- they're supposed to be is, you know, just not like out of continuity stories. But a lot of them anyway. haven't been that way. This one I definitely know. feels like, yeah, we, we, this is just like extra Moon Knight stories we had yeah. laying around. <laughs> I don't know, but that last story kind of annoyed me, you know, where he did the, he did the whole thing backwards. So I just like started at the last page and read. No, <laughs> 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 you're no fun. <laughs> I tried it. I, I tried reading the story backwards. I'm like, what the hell is this? You so know, I, just, I honestly read the last page of every book first. I, I do. <gasps> the spoiler. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of those people, so. Oh, my. This this was, like, right up my alley, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Uh, But, no, I, and the art's great on, on this, on all the stories. Yeah, I agree, Ray. Second story was best. <laughs> oh, the Spider-Man one? Yeah. Uh, hey, man, put it into the atmosphere. Here we're kind of, uh, Hickman, yeah, he could tell the story, just as long as it's not X. <laughs> Where he needed the, where Spider Man wanted to uh, borrow the Mister Night suit. <laughs> Everybody wants to borrow that Mister Night suit. I know. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. Then the next thing, you, then the next thing you know, Deadpool's like, "Hey, can I borrow that suit?" No. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it back with Cheeto crumbs. No. <laughs> Blood stain. <laughs> yeah. No. Again, I, I knew I'd be here for this book, and I'm here for this book. Uh, again, beautiful art on this. The, Flipping his way downtown, always nice to see. And again, and again, of course, visually, Moon Knight's gonna look the best in black and you know, black and white. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm 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 definitely here for this. What is this like five or something? I think it's like four or five. I'm here for it. Yeah, I think it's it's four. I think they've all been like four, right? If yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember, did someone get five? I can't remember. But I, I wish we had a Moon Knight expert listening to us who could tell us how long this Moon Knight. <laughs> I wish the host of Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast, was listening to this. The original Moon Knight podcast. That's right. <laughs> Always imitated, never duplicated. <laughs> Closing in on 300 episodes here in a few months. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, suck it, Phil. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I mean, with our legacy uh, number, yeah, easily. Thank you, Marvel. Yeah, I told right. you. I told you. I know, but sometimes Marvel does like five. Yeah, it's, he's not stuff. Wolverine. He's not getting five. <laughs> oh, burn! <laughs> Let, let's be real. We all know. Well, maybe now, especially if they are they announcing a season two or. I mean, we just assume it, or supposedly, supposedly they had no plans for it. But yeah, I wonder what those streaming numbers are. You know, if the streaming numbers are there, you know they're going to back up the money truck to Oscar Isaac. So, well, but you know, it's sort of like you know, here's here's the thing, and he's it's already like, on the payroll. So, <laughs> yeah, but they don't they don't necessarily have to do another. They could do a Moon Knight movie as an example. You know, yeah. they said they he was showing up somewhere. I didn't have time to read the article. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's probably going to show up in in Werewolf by Night. That seems like the logical place for him. Are, are they going to do like a Midnight Suns eventually? Is it going to be like him, Blade? Did I tell you I found the, the first issue of that in my local comic book shop? Oh, did you watch from the 90s? Yeah. I'm going to, like, I, I think I might make that trip in July. So I might have to get that signed. Really? I might. I have to see. I, I'll have to, like, do a whole lot of work ahead of time. But I think I might. Moonlight. So you might have to drive the eight hours, Phil. I'm sorry. Oh, I got the good mic out for you guys. Oh my lord! Yeah, one way eight hours in. <laughs> uh, yes, Ray, we have a gajillion episodes. That's what we said. If we numbered them all the same thing, we'd probably be over a thousand at this point. It's over nine thousand. Suck it, Ray. <laughs> Look at everyone. All right. So, anyone else have any books to throw out here? Oh, I do. I do. Okay. Okay. Captain America, Symbol of Truth. Nobody else bought this? We did oh, buy it, but I, 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 I thought we were going to talk it on our Avengers podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. I just want to say, I actually no, thought this book was okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not a Captain America fan, neither Sam nor Falcon, So, but I, I did pick it up, and I thought it was okay. I was going to say. So I will look forward to what you guys have to talk about. I was going to say, it's okay. Avengers Academy. <laughs> Declassified. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I wanted Avengers Unmasked, but Phil, Phil said... Uh, Avengers Declassified. So. Sit here with a fake. <laughs> We're all fighting about that. We're all fighting about the title. That's hilarious. No, no, no. See, what it is is Phil's in charge. So Phil says, I want it to be this. And so then it's that. Hey, I, hey, I learned from the best. I roll with an iron fist. So says Master Doom. <laughs> Third best Southgate. <laughs> Coming soon. I will toss this out real quick. Suicide yes. Squad number uh, 15. I think it's last, last of it. Yeah. Um, Ends well, you know. It's basically a it's basically a reverse heist where you have the intricate plan where they all get captured, but that was their plan all along to kidnap Lex Luthor, and then they do kidnap Lex Luthor, and they say, "Well, actually, we just want a job. So could you can you bankroll us?" And he's like, "Oh, give me yeah. some money." <laughs> I was like, "No, I could totally see a use for a group of ex supervillains." On my payroll, yes. Hey, let, have- let's create a league of our <laughs> own, shall we? We need the money, gimme, gimme. An injustice league? <laughs> yeah. a, a syndicate of some kind? <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 very cool. Ta- Task Force Lex. So we're going to see them in hopefully the near future. Amanda and- Waller's going to kick his ass. <laughs> oh, she's off on her. She's she's retired. She's on her. I know. She's over on Earth 3 causing Earth havoc. Three, I know. Yeah, she's. She, yeah, she's She's got her little retirement uh, villa on Earth 3, and, you know, she's doing fine. That's all she wanted was just to... Just to get away from world. it all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Ray. A world she could rule with an iron fist. Yes, Ray, it does seem, seem like Bizarro World, both recommending Cap, Charlie recommending DC, yes. Although, the only reason he's reading su- he was reading Suicide Squad, Ray, because it's his favorite DC character, Ambush Bug, was in it, yes. And Ray was, me- Ray was best. Ray was like, wait a minute, did I fall through a dimensional portal? Did I get sucked through a mother box or boot? <laughs> hey, man, he's going to. Am I on Earth 3? Well, if he's going to know those references soon, because he said he's enjoying the uh, DC uh, Infinite app, uh, he's he's still cruising through the Mark Wade flashes, and he's looking for more 90s stuff. Through. Oh, hell, you might as well stop right there. <laughs> no shade, no shade. <laughs> Once you get through the Mark Wade flashes, it's a while before, like, you know, it gets entertaining again. <laughs> well, the Jeff Johns. I said what I said. I know, but <laughs> R- Ray, we do do a Green Lantern podcast you can send feedback for. <laughs> DC Infinite Rocks. Ooh! Now we are in Bizarro World! <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's finite, by the way, Ray. It's finite. <laughs> I thought they canceled that that app. Uh, they took the, the no. It's just comic books only. Yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's, oh, okay. it's like Marvel Unlimited now. Yeah, it's just the comics. Yeah. 
They, but it should have always been. Yeah. Like, why the, would you all, try to shoehorn everything? All the, all the shows they took off and put on HBO when Max. You know, so. HBO, like, ooh, Discovery. Yeah, Discovery had every right to fire everybody because it was a mess. All right. So, <gasps> But the Cartoon Network president did just get fired and I am devastated. Oh, my. <laughs> like, leave Cartoon Network alone. They're doing fine playing Teen Titans Go uh, uh, or whatever that show is a million times. They're like MTV with freaking ridiculousness. Every time you turn on the TV, apparently somebody's watching it. I was going to say, the, pre- the president of Cartoon Network got fired. What is this, a Teen Titans episode? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't even... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused why you would fire the president of Cartoon Network. I... <laughs> Me too! That's what I'm like, saying! Like, I discovered you've got a bridge too far. Are they not making their money back? And it's like, is that the place in the Warner Warner system that is having problems? Well, they did greenlight Rick and Morty, and we only get a season every three years, so I would... I, I, you know. You know, well, you know, I mean, that's the thing, is that, you know, I don't know how much these seasons cost, but, you know, I gotta think they're making their money back on the t-shirts, at least. Oh, on the t-shirts, at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's the sweetest plum, man. We need the merch. Yeah. Gimme, gimme. This was a pretty solid week for uh, the big two, though. Uh, they, like, they didn't put out too many books, and mostly all the books that they put out were pretty good. Yeah. Um, this is, like, one of the best comic book weeks in a really long time, to uh, be quite honest. Again, that's high praise from Little Hellfire when she says a cap book is, yeah, not, you know, okay. <laughs> so not that bad. <laughs> I'm not in on the on the story, so it's just like, but yeah, it was yeah. okay. Like as, as like somebody that's just like really doesn't know too much, like it was it's a good primer. We'll see. We'll see what she says in June when Steve Rogers comes out. Well, uh, we've already kind of discussed how I feel about that. So yeah. Oh, that they're doing both books. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Sorry. Well, they're gonna try. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No, no. I mean, I got, I got like a ton of books here. I can go on for another hour, but I don't think we want to go for another hour. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we got a whole other show to do. We got to talk some yeah. Avengers Declassified. Suck a little. I will say this: uh, Avengers are best. I'm sorry with Charlie. <laughs> if you are a Star Wars fan, you should be reading uh, the main Star Wars title, uh, which takes place uh, after Empire, but before uh, Return, and it's a really great. Uh, it's a really great war comic, uh, you know, in space. And, uh, of course, the Mirror War continues on. Uh, Picard is cool. and uh, The Mirror War is he... the best thing about Star Trek, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> How it yeah. just goes through every single show. I mean, it's really cool. But all, although I will say, because I'm, I'm biased, I think Deep Space Nine has the best Mirrorverse un- uh, universe episodes. Oh, yeah. Well, and this goes into that. There's Tarek Norg, and, the, and they, they do get everybody in the, in the Mirror War. So it's, it's fun. Um... You know, I wish they'd do more with Wesley, but that's... Charlie Unleashed! <laughs> that's just me. All right, so... All right, we good? Yeah. Yeah. We got our all the Avengers books. Oh, yes. Char- okay, so, yeah, Ray, if you want to stay tuned, uh, Charlie and I will be doing the Avengers show, so... All right, <laughs> we'll go in-depth on Captain America since Lilith won't be here. All right, so... <laughs> All right, kids. Yeah, send us your thoughts. What do you think of Star Trek Strange New Worlds? The internet seems to love it. So, yes, email us. Keep saying Suspiciously it. so. <laughs> hey, man. The people said we want more classic Trek. All right. So, yes, email us. Keep saying Lou. You know what that means? <laughs> White man's in charge. Oh, make exactly. The, the Charlie Jensen. Oh, <laughs> make, Trek, make Trek great again. Okay. White guy was in charge. He was a Frenchman. <laughs> oh. Can't have that now, can we? Sean Luke Picard, what? <laughs> Ray, are you dr- is Ray drunk? Charlie, he is drunk. Charlie in the clink. He's drinking some of that wine. Uh. All right, so yes, email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, find, hey, go go join the uh, Capes and Lunatics uh, fan group, uh, pop culture fan group on fa- uh, Facebook. Uh, follow, uh, find links to all the various social medias and Facebook groups we do for all the shows. Uh, links to the uh, YouTube channel again. Everything we do gets an episode, a video on there. So, yes, go smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of it. 
Smash it. Smash it. Hey, that's what Will's going to do. All right. And again, most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, again, we're out here uh, banking. Uh, yes. Backing this ourselves. So every little bit helps. But three to five. I'm not there yet. Little Fel- I'm little- probably time she heard that. I ain't there yet. Little Hellfire. All right. So yes. Uh, subscribe to the Patreon. Three to five dollars gets you uh, early access to creator interviews. Mr. DG Chichester every month. I got the good mic out for you guys. And superhero mo- superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. We have crowned the Marvel. Even if it kills Phil. <laughs> and it will. And we, we have crowned the Marvel winner. And the May episode will be Batman Forever versus Batman and Robin. So you know Ray's going to be tuning in for that one. Ray, we're going to trash Batman. So. <laughs> Sausage. Trash me. Sausage kick. <laughs> all right. So, yes. Yeah, so if you can, subscribe to the Patreon. Or now, hold it up a little. See. Get yourself some Capes of Lunatics and Capes of Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Great for holding peanut m ms See, we put our money where our mouths are on a cup. <laughs> all right, so find everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Lilith Hellfire, where can people find you uh, trashing things oh. on the internet? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to have some hot takes, you can find me on at Lilith Hellfire on Twitter. At Lil Hellfire 69 on Instagram and of course on TikTok making comments, not content. Cannot stress that enough. At Lil Hellfire 69. Duh. Either do the six or do the nine. Come on! Get your head out of your butt, buddy. (laughs) Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. Charlie Esser. Well, if you'd like to write to me in that old fashioned email way, where our mothers and fathers once did. Do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things, but not Naomi. I am finally free. At After Charlie the chat. <laughs> That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. Bada bing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, kid. Thank you, kids, for going with us. Boldly going with us, where no sane person has ever gone before. <laughs> That's be our tagline. All right, for another week, we have been your capes. Episode. Lunatics. There you go. Yay, we did it. Yay. Again, kids, two. Two months until 269. Twice the fun. Hey, Twice the trouble. <laughs> hey, Ray. Sam Ray, Lilith is in charge of 269, so. Catch it in July, kids. Quarter summer of 69. We're going to have a wholesome episode. What are you talking about? But until then, let's go. Hi, I'm one of the High Priests of Conchu Ray, and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener, with a podcast honouring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your Conchu on.